Justice is ruling on this, it certainly leaves open the possibility that if they come back with some... What do you mean by that? Um, uh, he basically said what they presented was contrived, but they but they have every right to make this decision. It was a problem. And the White House, uh, the president said, you know, we, we're going to try and get this on. Still, yeah. this issue isn't over. Yeah, so no. Justice Roberts is concerned about the integrity of the court and the respect that Americans traditionally have had for this regard. Remember when that disputed election was decided by a divided Supreme Court in 2000 and Americans accepted it almost immediately. How can we have confirmation battles like this that are so pitched and so partisan for justice and then expect Americans to think that someone who gets confirmed on the court for the rest of us will suddenly not be a part yeah, I think, well, well, address this in my book. <laughs> um, but I think it's a real problem because the, the Supreme Court relies on other government institutions to enforce its, its rulings and to uh, go along with them. And it's not just that, but, you know, the country demographically is going one way, the court seems to be going another way, you know, 20, 30 years from now, if there's a big divide, I think that is a real problem, and people may just say, you know, treat the court as irrelevant. Where does that leave us? What do you make of some of the Democratic presidential candidates like Pete Buttigieg, who are saying the court should be expanded? Is that a rising talking point, a rising suggestion on the left? No. <laughs> More candidates actually should be talking about the Supreme Court because the stakes are so high. And, you know, whatever you think about Mayor Buttigieg's plan, at least he's talking about it. I was really surprised at how little the issue of the Supreme Court came up during Bernie the Sanders. Bernie Sanders the answer. But de Blasio was asked a direct question about it, and he started talking about something completely different. The Republicans have made the Supreme Court and the federal judiciary a cornerstone of their message, and it's worked. The Democrats have not found a way to do the same. And if you're not only you're seeing this uh, spring up, you know, demand justice that Brian Taylor do, you're seeing the Democrats trying to make a bigger effort, which, by the way, is now spurring more Republican groups to spring up to fight the effort. And uh, I do think that I agree with you that it wasn't talked about as much in the debates as I had expected. But I do think during the campaign, you're going to see Democrats talk a lot more about the group than they have in the past. When I was reading your book, Carl, I kept wondering why. Why are the Republicans so driven to really focus on the federal courts? Is it the issue of abortion? I, I think it's abortion. Well, I think abortion is one of the issues, but I also think that in, in the view of Republicans, the federal government uh, is the real problem. And that the, whether it's president or Congress, it is all about more power for the federal government. And in that way, they believe that that is against the basic principles of conservatism. They, you know, they're a small government party. Uh, and what they see is the government apparatus, other than the court, aligned against them. You know, that's true, but Roe v. Wade really spurred Republicans to take on the court as a fundamental issue and as a voting issue. And you know what could make Democrats feel that way? Overturning Roe v. Wade. If that, if that, you know, there's a lot going on at the state level if that got to the court and to have that court. But I make this point that uh, uh, Gorsuch and uh, Kavanaugh were put on the court by Don McGahn, the chief counsel of the White House and Public Service. They, they get them on abortion, but to deconstruct the administrative state, they want... Well, your book reveals that's really why those two people that's were chosen. Were there. It they, wasn't because they were but their position on abortion. That was um, part of the... Yeah, it's deconstruct. rolling back the agency power. There were a couple of decisions this week that came up on the edge. Didn't quite get there because of Justice Roberts again, but uh, Justice Alito and others, and Justice Gorsuch writing, this is coming, so we're going to make this change. That's absolutely right. I mean, it didn't get any, talking about administrative law doesn't get headlines. <laughs> Nobody knows what our deference means. But that there are crucial, crucial issues when it comes to uh, this issue. It's a big issue that Republicans are pushing. That's it for this edition of the Washington Week Extra. You can listen wherever you get your podcasts or watch on our Washington Week website. While you're online, check out the Washington Weekly News Quiz. I'm Robert Costa. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. This episode is brought to you by Cox. With Contour TV from Cox, you can find all your favorites all in one place. And does it have the... I say to Chicagoans and everyone, my president gets much too little credit for all that he did. He was one of the great presidents of the United States of America. And I'm tired of hearing about what he didn't do. But here's what he did. Everything that landed on his desk, I watched him. 
I watched him. I sat with him every single morning. And I watched him for hundreds of hours. And I want to tell you, Chicago, you had a great, great man out here. And he's still a great man. And he still has a lot to offer. John Walter, there he was in your hometown of Chicago uh, today. Is that uh, the best uh, Biden kind of heat shield on, in this subject area? 